So hello and welcome to Crafty Doctor on YouTube. So this video will show you how I performed a PC mod by installing a 5 inch LCD just where the red X is there. The video does show each stage in detail so if this is something that interests you or something that you are looking at doing then this particular mod can be completed on lots of different types of cases. So if that's something you're interested in please do carry on watching. So first off, let's just get the disclosure out of the way. This video is not sponsored by anyone or any company. All items have been purchased in full by myself. Any links in the description of this video will be affiliate links and they'll probably be Amazon, which means if you click on the link and purchase the item through the link, I will get a very small amount of the profit of that item. Product or the item that you purchase through the link will not cost you any more than it would do normally. And by doing it, it just means that you are helping support my channel. Okay, so let's get started and see what we need. So the first thing you're going to need is a pop rivet gun. This needs to be able to accept uh, pop rivets of the size of 3.2 millimeters or 1 8th uh, of an inch. Uh, they come with the adapters on the gun. These are quite cheap to buy on Amazon or eBay or something like that. So I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, you're also going to need, uh, which I'm not showing here, is a drill, a Dremel or equivalent, metal file and some matching touch-up paint for the color of your PC case. I've got um, a selection of different pot rivets there, that's what's in the bag, uh, but I'll only be using 3.2 millimetres. You're also going to need some double-sided tape. Now this is 3M uh, double-sided tape. I always use 3M. It's got a, a better quality glue on it and it's a better contact adhesive. This is 5 millimetre in width uh, and it's 0.8 thick. It's sort of stuff that we use on laptop screens and stuff like that when we're replacing them. Uh, you're also going to need a 3.2 millimeter, or again, 1 eighth of an inch H, uh, high speed steel drill bit or HSS drill bit. And obviously you're going to need a screen to install in your case. I'm using a 5 inch LCD made by a company called Waveshare. Uh, the sold is a Raspberry Pi screen. Uh, they have a HDMI and they're powered by USB. You can get some of these that are powered by HDMI. I'll put it in the description below um, for this particular product. Um, the resolution of this one is 800 by 480, so you might want a, um, a different type of screen. And I'm just showing you what you get in the box. You get a, a small HDMI lead. Uh, you get some uh, nuts and bolts, a touch pen, because this one has a touch screen on it. I'm not going to be utilizing the touch screen. I'm just going to be installing it as a standard sort of LCD. But it does have the ability built in if you want to do that. Also, in the, uh, with this particular screen, you get a uh, USB, micro USB to your standard USB lead. You get a short HDMI lead. Bearing in mind, this is for a Raspberry Pi, um, so this will be to connect it to the actual Raspberry Pi computer. Uh, so they're only very short, so you might have to uh, put a longer lead in. Uh, as I get further into the video, you'll see uh, why, because it's coming from the back of the actual PC case. And then you also, like I say, get the USB lead to power the actual screen. And this is the LCD, it's a 5 inch HDMI LCD, 800 by 480 uh, and it's just a standard LCD. Uh, it's got USB touch like I said earlier, it has a, an on off switch for the backlight uh, which obviously we're going to be leaving it on so we can see the screen. Uh, and then you have the two uh, power USB uh, power connectors on the side of the screen. Uh, we're going to be using the top one just for the USB power because we don't want to enable the uh, touch screen side of it. Uh, but you might want to do and that's the HDMI that we're going to be uh, installing and using from the graphics card. So one thing I didn't mention, your graphics card does need to have um, several outputs or, or one at least spare. Uh, it could be a HDMI uh, or it could be a DP uh, display port connector that you can convert like I'm going to do. So this um, bag of plastic bits is a stand, uh, an outer case that you can use uh, if you're putting it onto a Raspberry Pi. But you might want to include this in your build. You can see it goes around the outer edge of the screen. I don't want to use it because, as you can see, it um, it would have been better if it covered over some of the connectors at the bottom. For some reason, they've left it so it's just the uh, just holds around the outer side of it, so it doesn't really cover the uh, the metal around the at the bottom there that I'm indicating. So it's a shame that we can't use that, but um, I'm definitely not going to use it on this build. So let's get on with the case, take the glass off. Uh, and what I would say is um, to do this mod is probably best to do it when all the actual motherboard and all the other bits and pieces are removed out of the case. I'm going to do it with the motherboard in, uh, but obviously there's uh, bits of metal swarf. Um, obviously we don't want that going onto the motherboard and creating a short and damaging any components. So I'd say remove all the stuff out of the case if you're doing this. I'm just leaving it in 
purely just to show you that it can be done uh, and we're going to be drilling these rivets out that i'm pointing to here and i will indicate which ones need to come out so there's three on the top there's one on the back there's also three on the bottom of the case uh, and there's also two at the very front of the uh, right hand side of the case that you have to access from the uh, underside uh, these two arrows here so the two pot rivets you can only access them from the actual back of the pc case i couldn't get the camera in to show you me uh, me removing the heads uh, but basically put your dremel in take the head off the top of the rivet from the inside of the case and then, then two tabs will pop out uh, but we'll uh, drill out the uh, several of these now so we can see uh, what we need to do so put your 3.2 millimeter or three mil drill bit in and i'll just show you a technique for removing them if they start to spin because sometimes you can drill these out um, and if the actual pot rivet starts to spin what you do is just wiggle the actual drill from side to side like that and that should just make the head just pop off and then that leaves it out um, like i say if you're doing it with the items in be very careful when you're working around here um obviously i've checked but the, the power supply there you have the power cables that are all sat around these pot rivets so I'm putting a piece of um, piece of paper, bit of, bit of paper in there just to protect any components as I drill these out. Again, if you're doing it with something in, I would recommend taking the power supply out because the power supply is directly underneath these rivets. And again, if you're struggling, just tilt the drill bit to the side just to take the head off uh, and then give it a clear out. And you can see the swarf and bits of metal coming off as I'm drilling these out. So I have these three on the top there, which I'm just taking out. Uh, once they're clear obviously one on the rear take that one out that's the single one and, and i've also just shown you the ones on the bottom there is three on the bottom that need to come out once it's off just tilt the bottom out it, the bottom sort of comes out first and then the top is tucked underneath the fold uh, with this little ridges you can see in the top of the guard uh, you could actually do this mod with it in but they're the two at the front of the case that you have to get from the other side and obviously these are really awkward to get out but once you've got them out of the way uh, you don't need to be putting any new ones back in uh, because i am putting the screen just to the right and i'll show you the measurements and stuff and how i lined it up uh, with the actual white cover that i'm doing uh, but it's going to sit just directly where i'm pointing there uh, and just there there is a hard drive caddy uh, that uh, is in the way of where we are going to put the screen so there's four screws on the underside that you can screw to take off but i'm going to put in the screen just about there i'm going to put it central to that white band that comes down that had the character stood on it so what we'll do i'll just uh, zoom the camera in a bit just so you can see a bit better uh, and i will show you them like i said the measurements on how i'm going to centralize this in a second but i'm going to put it uh, perfectly in line with the white band and you can see the caddies in the way there like i said there's four screws on the underside you just unscrew them and then the caddy will lift out like so uh, obviously if you're using this caddy then the uh, you might have to reposition your hard drives uh, out the way uh, just so you can fit this screen uh, also if you're doing this with the actual white plate uh, white plate uh, in position which would be uh, be great you could do that then that caddy needs to come out first so i'm going to put this plate back in make sure it's uh, clicked back in where its original position is and i'm going to line up the screen and just see how it's going to look uh, and how i'm going to centralize it so i need to put a mark in the center of the white band with a pencil uh, so i'm just going to get my ruler and the first measure i need to do is just measure the actual width of that white band and once i've got the measurement i want to go central to that so it's about 52 mil so about 26 mil to the center of the white band uh, so now i'm happy with in fact i'm just going to correct it because it's about 54 so i'm going to go uh, 27 mil to the center of the screen so mark again 27 mil small mark and that's the center of my lcd and where it's going to sit in the uh, white cover plate so now i've got the measurement now i can uh, take the white cover plate off now and start to get things marked out so just a quick double check make sure we're happy so i'm looking at where it's going to sit in the center of the screen make sure everything's going to sit perfectly um, and it looks okay uh, so with this now I need to see where my measurements are. So I want the hole to be 110. So I'm going 110 from edge to edge. And then on the height, it's what about 66, something like 66 millimeters. 
110 in width. So I need to be uh, putting that measurement and transferring that measurement across because I just want the actual screen to be visible. I don't want to see any of the silver around the outer edges. Uh, so I want these measurements that I'm checking here uh, transferring on to my white plate. So I'll take the white plate off and let's get things transferred. So again, I'm speeding bits up here that we don't need them to see. Um, I'm using the tape measure across from the far left hand side to make sure that everything's square. So I'll centralize to the actual plate, double check all the measurements, and then put my outer marks on. So 110 mil, and then transfer them down across the plate. Double check from the, let me just zoom out to show you. Double check from the far end to make sure it's square. So I'm just checking at the measurement there. So that 240, make sure that it's exactly the same, 240. So I know that these measurements and these dimensions are correct. Again, down there, so 350, 351 from that edge. So I know that that's square and um, lined up with the edges of the case. So now I need to do the height. And this was the one that was about, what, it's about 66, 67 millimeters. So I need to put the, transfer that dimension across onto here. And then put it onto that side. Draw my, cast my lines across. And then that will give me the dimension that I want to, that I need to cut out of this plate that's now going to hold uh, the uh, five inch LCD. So again, I'm just double checking measurements. So check twice, cut once. Or check as many times as you want and only cut once. So my dimensions for this particular screen are 110 mil wide by 66 millimeters in height. Yours might be different if you're using a different screen. Um, so obviously set these to what you need. Okay, so I think it's about time to do some cutting. So on to the workbench. Uh, and again, if you're doing this in the case, then obviously you'll be working in the case with it led, uh, led down. But I've got mine sat on a couple of pieces of hardwood just underneath just to lift it off the table so I can center pop. So now at this point uh, is to decide on how you are going to drill the corners. So I'm going to be using about a six mil drill. So I need to put a center pop on the inside of the actual uh, measurements I've done. Uh, so they, this will guide the actual drill in the corners and gives me something to cut my, uh, use my cutting disc to cut up to. So I will hold this to the camera now, I've center popped them and then you can see. Um, so this at this point is what you decide on how big of a radius you want in the corner. Uh, you might want to do it square, uh, but I've just popped it just on the inside of the actual uh, lines with the, that I've just drawn uh, and I will hold it to the camera like I say I'll just finish drilling these uh, and then you'll see what I mean uh, but that edge of that drill bit wants to be in line with the actual markings out so we don't go further and past and beyond the actual uh, hole that we're trying to cut out so drill the four holes uh, to the uh, radius or the diameter that you want on the edge of the markings and then you can see there I'm on the the actual holes uh, the lines are on the actual outside of the hole and then now I can use my cutting disc and cut along into them and it just puts a small um, radius in the corner uh, which is not really noticeable when you've uh, got the whole uh, the shape cut out the rectangular cut out so I'm holding mine in a vise you might have a vise handy uh, so you could possibly use a screw in the side to pin it to sort of a piece of wood while you do the cutting uh, or again if you're doing this in the case when you have, if you've got no components in your case if you're doing it in there then uh, you can uh, obviously the case will hold it still while you do your cutting. So I'm using a Dremel um, or equivalent. Uh, it is now time to put some uh, safety glasses on um, if you're not done already when you were drilling. Uh, and I'll try and get the best camera angles I can to show you. Uh, and a quick tip here is to just do a quick test in the middle just to get a feel of how the cut is going to uh, use. And again, if I get a chance, I will put the uh, link to the uh, Dremel bits that I'm using uh, on this particular uh, build so I'll like so I'll, I will change the angle as I go along uh, and if it excuse the camera just changing color here It's just because of the sparks it keeps uh, setting off the camera it keeps changing the color in the camera um, so the thing is to hold it stable two hands while using the Dremel and Be really just careful and take your time with this nice and steady firm grip and then you want to get this as Right to the edge of the holes as you can see as uh, as I'm doing the cut there nice smooth action along make sure you're not cutting into anything underneath um, again if it's doing it in the case then if you remove that caddy it shouldn't really catch uh, but this is how to use your dremel nice and steady 
um, just make sure you've got the full cut in there and the bit of smoke there was just as it cut through into the wood underneath which is ideal this is what it's there for um, now along this edge here and just take your time so like I say I am showing these just so you can see how it's done uh, and these Dremel discs are really good for this type of thing uh, really nice clean cut and you don't necessarily have to use a Dremel disc uh, there is obviously other makes out there it's just that this uh, particular brand the Dremel brand uh, they make a good quality disc uh, so this disc that I'm using at the moment will easily cut through these uh, four uh, cuts uh, and if it was wearing badly you would have seen the disc going smaller and smaller but as you can see it's uh, performing really well cuts nice and clean um, and it's just a better way to do it for the extra couple of pound that you pay for the Dremel stuff uh, it uh, is better quality stuff and helps getting a better finish when you're doing stuff like this okay so once you've done your four cuts you can then pop out the center bit and once you've got to this stage we now need to tidy things up so there's burrs all the way around uh, and if you've done your cut clean enough and close enough to the holes um, we should be able to just file along and deburr and tidy things up so again i'm just clamping mine in between the two pieces of wood in the vise and I'm going to be using a technique, what they call a draw filing, uh, which is where you hold the file on its side and go up and down the area that you're working with. Uh, this is just to get it tight up to the radiuses that I've just created with the drill bit. And then also just to deburr the edges along the um, inside and outside of the actual cut. So draw filing all four sides of your cut until you're happy that you've got the finish that uh, you require and once you've got it all tidied up and deburred uh, we can then uh, finally get it cleaned down so a bit of uh, white spray or something like that uh, and give it a good clean uh, and depending on if you're painting it or spraying it uh, is obviously now is a time uh, to make sure that you get all the grease off and stuff like that if you're just painting along the edge uh, or along the edges with say a touch-up paint uh, then just clean up and tidy up as best you can so i've just put white spirit give it a good clean looks good uh, and now i can get some spray on it so i'll get a bit of newspaper down and i'm using just some uh, standard white uh, spray paint model paint uh, i think it's a plastic coat type of paint uh, but i'm just spraying it with that and another good tip here is to the cut off that you've got give that a clean this is the bit that the that came out of the side panel is to if you're not very confident sprayer and i'm not brilliant at spraying uh, so is uh, now's the time to use that center bit as a test uh, and give it a, a, a test on there make sure you're happy with spraying uh, the finish that it gives so if you're happy with that then you can then go on to the main uh, side panel so i'm happy with the color match so i can get rid of the scrap bit of metal and I can now bring the main bit in and give that a spray. So there's a couple of chips on the end um, and obviously where we've cut it out, once spraying all round. So I'll get it sprayed up and then whilst that is drying, we can then get on to testing the screen. So before you install the screen, the right thing to do is check all the connections and make sure it powers up and uh, shows how you want it to show. We don't want to be sticking it to the uh, metal uh, cowling the side cowling before we've tested the screen so connect up the usb that was the micro usb and on my screen this wave share screen it goes into the top one if you go for the one underneath that uh, enables the touch screen and i'm not bothered about touch screen on the side of the case i'm using uh, gtx 1080 and it's got three display ports and one hdmi i'm already using one display port and a hdmi already so i'm using a display port to hdmi adapter and that will give me my hdmi end that i need from the case i'm just using the shorter hdmi at this point um, but i will need a longer one to get to the uh, the inside of the case so plug it all up now uh, plug it all in should i say and get it connected and once you've got it connected switch the screen uh, switch your pc on um, with these two connected and then you should be able to see the uh, screen power up so the usb there i'm testing it on the back but on the final build i'm going to be using an internal usb connector so i've got one spare as you can see i just highlight it with a the red there so i'm going to use this for a usb breakout and i'm just going to be using um the type of connector i'm going to connect one in there i'm going to want the fly lead loose on the inside of the case you can get these on amazon and ebay 
uh, this type of connector. Uh, it comes with a back plate mounted on it, which I can unscrew. So the blue end is obviously where I've just been indicating inside the board. And then you can just unscrew the, uh, the holding plate off the front. And that will now give me uh, an internal USB power supply. So I don't have to have it powered from the back. As you can see the cable at the moment sticking out, that will be gone. Uh, I can then put it to the inside. So I've just got the back of the case, the side of the case um, off. And I'm feeding the USB through, connect it up. And then you can see I've left with the bottom right there with the, uh, the power for the screen. That's what will give me my USB power. And it'll be hidden underneath that central chamber uh, in this NZXT H500i case. Okay, so I'll connect up my power lead. I'm just using the USB that came with the actual screen uh, and also it gives me another internal usb if i need one um, say for some lights or something like that but yeah so that gives me my usb so I'll plug that one in and again before we start sticking stuff down we need to test it and make sure it all works with the setup that we're going to uh, use in the final sort of construction so connecting the power up see how it sits and see if anything catches and i can see straight away with this USB lead plugged, it's gonna catch on at that corner where the black folded steel comes round. That doesn't really do anything, so I'm just gonna mark out a small section here and I'm gonna cut that out um, where that's gonna sit. And the HDMI is also, um, I'll show you how to get around that because the HDMI will stick out even further um, and you can get a small 90 degree connector, which I'll show you in a minute, but just mark this out roughly. It, it, it will be sat behind the white uh, cover plate anyway, so, it's, um, it doesn't really matter, um, make sure you, it wants to be tidy, but obviously just marking out roughly. And this is the HDMI lead, I'm using a 90 uh, converter. And all this does is just allows the HDMI to sit 90 degrees to the actual LCD screen instead of it coming straight out. Uh, because otherwise I'd have to take two chunks out of the black uh, sort of edging. So I'm gonna plug the 90 in. And again, like I said earlier, this is the point where we, we test things. So, you know, get all your leads in how you expect it to sit. Uh, have a way up, make sure, do a dry run and see if it's going to sit comfortably um, in the position we want it to be. So I'm going to have to do a small cut where I've marked out with a pencil. But because I've got the 90 degree, let me just, I'm going to have to uh, move the camera in a minute just to give you a, a better angle from the other side so you can see what's going on. But I'm going to hacksaw uh, just two slots out from that side there. So I'll just take the LCD, just unplug it and just show you the 90 while it's in position. And get the camera to focus, I will. Uh, that's the 90 degree one and you can see it's uh, a male to female 90. There we go, it's focused better. Uh, it's a 90 degree connector. So I'm not going to show you hacksawing, but basically small junior hacksaw. Cut two slots all the way along and just where the green line is there, just fold it back, push it back in towards the case like so, and that now gives us a nice position for the cable to sit in. So now we're at this stage, we can bring our LCD back in, connect everything up and give it a test. But you can see there, as I just offer it up, where it's gonna sit central, it is now clear of the black. There we go, better angle on it. That's now clear of it. Uh, so it's gonna sit just nice when we get it all glued in. And you can see I've got the tabs on the, the four screw holes. They will be sat sort of in that position uh, because the actual uh, white cover plate doesn't actually sit flush onto them ridges, so it will clear there, so it won't hold it off or anything. Uh, and the other thing I did here was just take one of the back plates off and cut a small uh, hole in it and screwed it back in. And this is for the HDMI to go through. Um, and then I need my adapter. You might just be going straight to HDMI, so I'm using a display port adapter, HDMI to display port. I'm gonna plug that in. And like I said earlier, I am using a longer HDMI lead here. And then that's how it's gonna sit in the final build. And then if I just spin the case around, you can see if I indicate there, that's the HDMI just took in through the back of the case, um, down the side of the other side of the case. So I've spun the case all around. You can see that the HDMI is there and I, Obviously, there's a lot of wires on mine. If I had a modular power supply, then all them wires would be hidden. But um, mine isn't modular, so I have a spaghetti junction of wires underneath. 
But anyway, so now our side cover is uh, dry. It's, um, it's been left overnight and is now nice and dry. Make sure you're happy with the finish uh, and we can now look at uh, doing the final stages really, which is using our double-sided 3M tape and we're gonna put a small run of the tape all the way around the edge of the cut. And the trick here is to obviously take your time with this um, and be careful, but we're aiming to get it sort of right along the edge. Uh, we don't want to be visible. Um, we want it just slightly in if possible. Uh, but if we leave too big of a gap, it will you'll see the gap and you get dust down, it'll look a mess. Um, but if you put it too far over, then you will see the other side of the double-sided tape. So now's the time to take your time with this. I'm obviously going to speed it up because uh, I was taking my time doing it, uh, but this is the 5mm 3M double-sided tape. Uh, and like I said right at the beginning of this video, I use 3M because the contact adhesive on it is really good compared to some of the cheaper stuff. I have tried the cheaper stuff, um, but I always seem to go back to the 3M. It's it's only probably what, about three or four pounds, and if you're in America, probably about the same, three or four dollars, uh, something like that. Uh, it's not a lot of money to pay for a good product instead of the screen sort of dropping and falling off. Um, so you can see I've just slowed it down as, as I've worked along this edge and you can see I'm just leaving a very the smallest gap along the edge um, it's probably half a mil if that even um, but yeah make sure it's cut tight up with your craft knife or a Stanley knife or something like that and then making sure that you take your time on all four runs of tape and once you've got all of your sides stuck down and now is the time to do a dry run so you need to get your LCD screen offer it up into the actual side plate and make sure it all fits nice and lines up you can see it's a nice fit and uh, the four screw tabs once you get it there put some pressure on it and we'll flip the actual uh, side casing over and then you can see if it all lines up and looks okay make sure none of the silver uh, steel on the actual LCD is visible which is not so that's great uh, I will show you in a second, I did have to cut a small section out of the actual side plate uh, just to allow the, one of the four tabs that you saw on the LCD uh, to uh, come out the actual side of the actual um, side casing. But I've just taken the tape off now, so I'm getting ready to stick my LCD on and make sure that you get the LCD the right way around. Uh, you don't want to be putting it on and then it being upside down. Um, although you could flip it in Windows or whatever operating system you're using. Uh, but I will lift it in a second and show you also the bit that I cut out. Just there we go. So you can see uh, there's a section there that I've cut out um, to allow the tab. And it was just on the right-hand side there. So you will have to do that or cut the tab off your screen if you don't want to do any more cutting. So again, these are just another one of them jobs. Just take your time. You do only really get one hit. You can sort of put it on very gently and move it around a bit. Um, so I'm just losing focus on it and I'm just bringing it in here but uh, yeah you want to make sure you get it nice and square to the actual uh, side plate and you can see I'm slightly off there and because of this tape is a good quality tape it once it gets a hold it tends to really get a hold so I'm just struggling here just to get it properly lined up but I do manage it in the end and get it nice and square so just be careful putting it on making sure it's lined up and then once it is lined up like it is a contact adhesive on it so once you start putting pressure on around the screen and the longer it's there the better it will sit and you'll get a nice firm fix on your side uh, side plate so you can see the tab here this is one i had to cut out i was talking about earlier that one actually sits nicely in the actual um the pre dip that they've put in um but i actually cut out uh, one of the sections to allow it to sit and that's the final product in the side plate and i think it's now time to get it plugged in and in our actual pc case so we tested it earlier so we know it all works so all we need to do is connect it up to the same ports that we were using so in with the usb in with the HDMI and now we can lift it into the case so it goes in the reverse order so put your cables in make sure they're all tucked out of the way you can access them from the back uh, once you've got this in position so as long as they don't catch it should be okay and the top goes in first so the top tucks in and you've got your two tabs at the front and everything should just slot in nicely if we've done all our measurements right so just get them top ones in and then give it a small push in this corner it should click in and there we go and that's the actual 
side plate in with our LCD, our 5 inch LCD fitted to our NZXT H500i. Uh, so now we just need to secure this and this is where the pot rivet comes in. If you've not used pot rivets before, um, then they are really easy to use. Uh, there are 3.2 the holes. Um, obviously if the rivets come out nice and clean, then we should have a nice clean hole. Uh, this is the pot rivet gun um, and the trick here is don't really go putting them in unless they all line up so you could put all three in and make sure that they all sit in there before you start popping them I'm just going to put one in just to show you uh, but it, normally you would put uh, the pop rivets in the actual holes uh, and then once they're all sat in the holes then you can move along I'll just show you the size there are 3.2 or just a bit they'll probably be just a bit less uh, but there you go so 3.15, we get the camera to focus, 3.15 millimetres, no, 3.2, which is an eighth if you're still on Imperial or in America, um, then that's the type of pop rivet size that you need. So I'll put one in, really easy to use, get your gun, make sure you've got the right adapter in your pop rivet gun, put it down to the pop rivet and all you do is pull. And what it does, it pulls the actual centre shaft through the adapter uh, it might need two or three pumps depending on how long and how uh, good of a gun you've got. And the third one, should, there we go, should get it and it pops off. And that's it. So do all three of them. That's the top of the actual side case secured. Round to the rear. One, two, three. Pop that. That's that in. Flip it on, on the underside. Now there's two here. There is three, but the one that's on here, the LCD, you can't do because the LCD is too close. So that rivet, you leave it out. Um because obviously the screen's directly above it. Um, and that is it. That's our screen all fitted in and uh, ready to test. And last thing to do is just touch up with a bit of model paint, the top heads of the pop rivets. So I'm just using a standard model black paint just to touch up, just to hide the silver. Uh, so that is it. And last thing to do is to test it. I'm just going to quickly show you here. That's with using the NZXT um cam software which shows you the fan and cpu speed or you might just want to use it to as a third screen and maybe watch your favorite video on youtube so that is it that's how to install a five inch lcd for a custom pc build in the side paneling of your nzxt case thanks again for watching crafted auto on youtube i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please 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 do subscribe hit the like button and hit the bell icon to be notified of any new videos i might produce please do leave me any comments below i'd love to hear your thoughts on the length and the style of this video and thanks again for watching crafted auto on youtube